this is a Spitfire. But it is not just any Spitfire. It has tail number P7350 and it is the only Spitfire flying today that actually fought in the Battle of Britain. In fact, it was very nearly lost on a number of occasions, suffering cannon shell damage and a wheels up landing. It belongs to the Royal Air Force Battle of Britain Memorial Flight and in the words of ex-BBMF squadron leader Andy Milliken, it is, in my opinion, the most precious flying machine on the planet, bar maybe the Apollo 11 command capsule. This is a set of replica Spitfire controls for use with a flight simulator that runs on a desktop PC. The controls were designed by me, Phil Hume, an amateur engineer and the founder of Authenticit. They are available as free downloads for others to 3D print at home. Although they look somewhat realistic, they are essentially video game controllers and a world apart from the deadly serious machines of the defense industry. So, how on earth did this most precious of national treasures, this vital machine of war, created by the Supermarine Aircraft Company, come to share an RAF hangar with a set of Authenticate video game controllers, albeit mounted rather appealingly in a mock-up Spitfire cockpit? Well, it all started around 2018, when I was drawn to the idea to use 3D printers to make exact replicas of flight controls. They were not intended for museums or professional training, but for me to use at home, with a flight simulator, running on a personal computer, adding that next level of immersion to a virtual reality flying experience. Then, on December 5th, 2019, I released a flight stick for the Spitfire Mark IX as a free download and decided to call this initiative Authentic it. Um, a guy called Phil emailed me about a week ago. Would I be interested a Spitfire uh, fighter control stick? The spade design, it just feels right. And of course, when you're in VR, you're looking down at that actual controller that you're using. It really makes a big difference to that all important immersion. Many Spitfire pilots have said. When you fly this aircraft, it's like you put it on, like you're wearing it. And I feel like I'm getting close to that experience using an actual replica of this stick. I'm actually really surprised how much easier it is to fly the Spitfire using the proper flight stick, which really makes sense. I suppose it should be easier. The controls were all designed by me, though I hoped others would join me in time. They would be as accurate as possible and the designs would be released for free to private individuals to print and assemble at home. Over the coming months, the flight stick was added to with more and more Spitfire controls. Then in April of last year, Rich Boyce, a corporal in the RAF, submitted some photos to the Authenticate Support Forum of a wooden shell of a cockpit for a Spitfire that the Battle of Britain Memorial Flight had acquired. At the time, it used a fairly standard video game joystick, but the public relations department, and indeed the pilots of the BBMF, had requested a more authentic solution. A dialogue began between Boise and myself that would become an intensive working relationship throughout much of the year. What I didn't realise at the time was that Boise was very soon to complete his five-year tour of the BBMF on October 1st, so he was on a tight deadline to complete his ambition. And this ambition was to do whatever it took to launch a fully working Spitfire simulator, combining authenticate Spitfire controls and a virtual reality headset. 
This project would go right to the wire, as it was decided that the launch event would be the BBMF Members' Day, to be held Saturday, October 1st, 2022. By June, Boise and I had scoped out fairly well what we wanted to do, and although he intended to print his own controls, I felt that as time was of the essence, I would donate my own Spitfire controls to speed things up. So that involved a trip down to RAF Coningsby. I travelled down with my buddy Ruben, who runs SimKit Supplies, a small business which provides kits of all the hardware you need to make Authenticate controls. So Phil, where are we heading today? That's a very good question Ruben. We're on a road trip today. We're going to RAF Coningsby in Lincoln, Bomber County, Lincoln. I'm going to see the Battle of Brenton Memorial Flight because we've been invited by the Chief of Staff to have a look around the hangar and to show them some authentic gear. So we've got a boot full of Spitfire parts. I know you brought a bit of hardware and we're going to be checking out what this stuff looks like in the context of a real Spitfire. Rock and roll. After months of online collaboration with Boise, it all started to feel a lot more real as we drove through the gates where we were greeted by Corporal Dan Cunningham, who sorted out our passes and escorted us in. Thanks, Dan. No worries. You can imagine I was a little nervous when I first presented my 3D printed controls to experienced engineers of the RAF, who know only too well how they ought to look. I guess they passed the test as the next stop was the hangar itself. Oh, look at that. And walking into that space is a feeling I will never forget. It just oozed history, and the priceless aircraft neatly lined up were a feast for the eyes. And then, there it was, P7350. Although the simulator we were building is for a Spitfire Mark IX, Ruben and I were invited to climb inside this magnificent Spitfire Mark IIA. There is nothing like the oil and petrol smell of a genuine historic machine. Of course, not only was it a boy's dream, but it was also a fantastic opportunity to discover firsthand how all the controls felt for real and their relative positions in the aircraft. <laughs> Indeed. I just love the sound of this brake lever, so we're applying the hydraulics here on the brakes. And then a bit of left rudder. And then a bit of right rudder. And then off it goes. You can really hear the air going. Mark 2 button there. Hope I don't shoot anybody. And, uh, and we've got what we think is a later throttle. Beautiful. The Battle of Britain Memorial Flight is also the proud custodian of one of the only two remaining Avro Lancaster bombers, which are still flying today. It's a very sobering fact when you consider that over 7,000 were built. So when we go flying, the loadmaster who looks after people on board always gets the tail gunner in first because it's the hardest get in. During the war, it's the same thing. The tail gunner would get in first. Yeah. Then one of his colleagues would pass him his parachute and store it for him. Right. So you've got two options. Yeah. You either slide down backwards and try and spin around, or you jump up onto the cushion. Can you hold something? Yeah, any of the yellow bars you can hold. Yeah. Sitting in the rear gunner's seat on a freezing cold night must have been a terrifying experience. Although our focus for the day was to work on the Spitfire simulator, this quick tour of the Lancaster was hugely memorable. In fact, I found it extremely poignant to think of the thousands of brave Lancaster airmen who never came home from these cold and dangerous missions. You sort of sit in these tight, cramped places, thinking that you're freezing and some bugger's trying to kill you, and <laughs> yeah, and you've got your jammed ammunition, and you're all exposed. Yeah. While Ruben and I had been touring the Lank, Boise, with the help of Corporal Ken Dowling, had been working on fitting out the simulator with Authenticate controls. Yeah, it needs strengthening, doesn't it? We'll, we'll put a metal plate yeah. in there. 
yeah. where that mount is, attach it to both those formers, and that should be a rigid, a rigid. That's good. Is that is that the right? It distance? feels it feels right. It measures about right. Yeah. Um, I'll get down to sitting it. In the real test, of course, was to connect everything up and try it out with the Quest headsets which the BBMF had chosen. This was the moment we'd all been waiting for. The next few weeks were extremely hectic. We had agreed on a target completion date of October 1st, but the Authenticate Spitfire simulator was always going to be a lower priority than the very busy aircraft maintenance and flying schedule. A second issue was that the engineers of the BBMF had very little experience of Microsoft Flight Simulator, which was the platform we had decided to use. And so, a second visit was arranged in August with YouTube content creator, VR Flight Sim Guy, Steve Walton. Steve has a huge amount of experience with Microsoft Flight Simulator. He knew the Spitfire. Unfortunately, he lives only 15 minutes away from RAF Coningsby. This second visit was a huge success. Boise, with the help of Dan and Ken, had been burning the midnight oil, kitting out the simulator. We were also able to add on a very appealing upgrade to the cockpit, as Authenticate community member Yari Kaskalin had released his blind flying panel, and the engineers had done a tremendous job printing and preparing it to a very high standard. Steve was able to try out the simulator and share his advice on some configuration settings. I think you've got an impressed audience here. I've got both wings <laughs> intact, so... <laughs> yeah, let's carry a look. Yes. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I knew they was all watching, I probably would have crashed. <laughs> You'd have blown it completely. <laughs> yeah, that worked really well, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm actually quite surprised. I didn't think it'd be quite... I don't know why, I just thought it might be struggling with performance, but that's... I guess it was only fair that the engineers also put us to work, preparing the aircraft for a flyover. I chatted with several engineers and pilots during the day and to hear their unanimous support for the project made me feel very proud of what we had all achieved. As is the way of things, October 1st came round in no time at all. The BBMF had allocated a substantial stand for the simulator and kindly provided space for us to show off the Authenticate system alongside it. I was really pleased that I was also allowed to invite some of the many people who had supported Authenticate over the recent past and helped bring this project together. Ian Coleman developed the tuning software to synchronize the rotation of replica trim wheels with real-world trim tab displacement. Mark Duff, with his highly regarded YouTube channel Simhanger, has supported Authenticate from very early on, and Steve Walton was also able to join us again. Unfortunately, Harry Armstrong couldn't make it. Harry had designed a Spitfire gun sight that the BBMF team had printed and mounted to the simulator just in time for the open day. And hopefully, all being well, uh, this Spitfire simulator will be shown at various sort of uh, events throughout the air show calendar, won't it? That's the plan, yeah. Yeah, that'll be great. Uh, so, you'll be able to, even if you're watching this video and you're quite intrigued to see what it might feel like to be a Spitfire pilot in real life, it's probably about as close as you're going to get, really, to be fair. So, what of the future? It's very exciting to know that real RAF pilots have been testing the simulator and are looking to use it to familiarize themselves with flyovers. We do need to do some fine tuning of the flight model so that ground speed exactly matches their real world experience at key RPM settings. Additionally, we plan to add more controls such as magnetos and fuel levers. Its educational role is expanding too and the simulator was also shown to the public again at a STEM event involving a number of schools in the Lincoln area and which was attended by Prince Edward. It is also a great opportunity to gather information to improve the accuracy of the Authenticate system based on measurements and data from the real Spitfires of the RAF. So, that brings us right up to date. I am personally extremely proud that Authenticate was selected for this project and that it has a potentially valuable role for education and pilot training. I'm also hugely grateful to everyone in the Authenticate community and of course the engineers and pilots at RAF Coningsby who helped bring this to fruition. Boise 
has now moved on from Coningsby to a new post, and the biggest thanks must surely go to him. He had to overcome countless obstacles to bring this project in on time, but he has certainly left the BBMF a fantastic legacy, which I am sure will go from strength to strength. Fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a lot of hard work by a lot of people, yeah. but it's just the start of a long project. For most of this project, I had assumed that the BBMF had constructed the Spitfire cockpit themselves, until I later discovered it had been built by an aviation enthusiast called Neil Patterson, who operates a very small business out of his garage called Creative Cockpits. To my astonishment, I also discovered that he happens to live a few miles up the road from me, on the west coast of Cumbria. So, on October 22nd, I went to see him. I discovered that he is a true aviation geek, a drone pilot who holds a PPL, and on top of that, he's a thoroughly decent bloke. Although he didn't have a Spitfire in his workshop at the time, he did have prototype number one of his next project, which I was thrilled to try out. Here's Phil from uh, Authenticit, flying the uh, creative cockpits. Red Arrow's Hawk, or as it's locally known, the the Red Mara, as it's locally known, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you're, you're, you're perfect, you're perfect for the low level loop there, so let's go for it. Yeah, C kill your throttle, oh, you're a bit close there. I'm on about. You're a bit close to the water. Um, chop your throttle. Maybe for you, Neil. Yeah, chop, <laughs> yeah, a, bit fa a bit faster my life, maybe you can handle it. It's just we've got a big corner coming up, so All just right. uh, chop your throttle. Which way is the cut the uh, I'll tell you when you've got a, oh, I'll, count, I'll count you in. You're so you, that's out, you've just passed Amble side, so it's uh, We're going three, right. two, one, left. Left! Uh, yeah, <laughs> over, uh, yeah, over Ridle. Ridle, right. And then... Uh, Still there, coming up. Yeah, just keep it tight to there, you'll go over Grasmere. Where's the, oh, is it the pass up yeah, there? You, yeah, that's Grasmere Sports Ground there, so you're just up Dunmill Rays now, up the follow the road, up Dunmill Rays. Right, we got the um, line, line and lamb on the left, yeah. Line yeah. and lamb should be it's not very obvious. Yeah, you just passed it. So yeah, there's the there's the road. Right, the <laughs> <laughs> She'll carry you at the top there. Yeah, wave at the photographers. You're very very low there. <laughs> yeah, down down back down to the film here again. I was just gonna do a little wing wobble for all the fellas on. <laughs> Hell, fellas. Yeah. Right, lads. There you go. How about that. Lovely. <laughs> now you can, you're probably quite well lined up to go down to St John's in the Vale there, so okay. keep to the slight, slightly to the right of the lake. You dive in there over oh, the ice cream van. Oh yeah. Past the King's Head. Yeah, that's lovely. Keep that bank on. Keep the bank on. Bank on. Are yeah. we going back up? Um... No, no. It's just to get yeah, keep you away from the town. Keep you on the proper low level route. All right. Over the, caravan, over the caravan site at Castle Rig there, just, we're just a little bit closer to the town than we should be, but that's fine. And then, uh, uh, ha right now, hang a right, over the lake, avoiding the town. And then down to the only lake in the, so that's, that's Derwent, you go yeah, over Derwent right. there. And then, <laughs> there then to the, the only lake in the Lake District. <laughs> uh, and uh, you can either do your... Uh,